our beautiful town of Whitby has a long history, dating back to the early 1800s. Though mostly known for its businesses, green spaces, and historical significance to World War II, the town of Whitby also has a darker history. Ghosts, haunted houses, and grisly crimes. Welcome to Whitby's Most Haunted. is just south of the Brooklyn community. It is located in the northern part of Heber Down Conservation Area, in an area that used to be known as the Devil's Den. The Nippentuck Railway was first opened in 1871. It went from Port Perry down to Port Whitby. Its original purpose was transporting grain from the northern farming communities down to the Whitby port where they could be more easily exported. In 1910, another railway was built, the CNR, which crossed paths with the Nip and Tuck Railway right here in Devil's Den. During the First World War, the train was used to transport soldiers. During that time, it was once discovered that someone had attempted to derail the train by tying a logging chain around the tracks. After that point, security was installed at the crossing, but despite this, in the 1920s, the train was used by bootleggers. Alcohol was hidden inside crates of turnips coming from the local farms. By the 1930s, the train had come to cost more than it earned, and in 1935, a petition was held to close down the line. It was closed down, and what remains now are mere ghosts of the line, which may be an apt description. During its existence, the CNR was often called a ghost train. It was so named because between several of its stops, it would be traveling completely empty. Locals wondered what may be walking these empty train cars. This particular spot, the Devil's Den Gully, has long been considered haunted by local residents, who since 1874 have reported shrieking noises coming from the gully, beginning only at night. Are these the cries of the travelers of the ghost railway? Or is it the devil himself? Heading south into the heart of downtown Whitby is the Whitby Legion, located on Byron Street, just south of Dundas. The charter for Branch 112 of the Royal Legion was granted on November 9, 1927. Since then, the Legion has become known as an integral part of the Whitby community. They took care of veterans and citizens alike. Charity drives through the Legion were very popular during the Great Depression, and the Legion has always ensured a proper and dignified celebration each Remembrance Day. This building was constructed in the 1940s and has remained the home of the Legion to this day. The Legion was known for its convivial atmosphere, and perhaps that is why some members of the Legion seem to still visit this place even after they have passed on. This building has been investigated for spirits and the Paranormal Seekers in 2016 visited this building and found quite a few signs of paranormal activity. They saw flashes of light, strange, unexplained noises, and camera movement. Though, by all accounts, it seems that this place is not haunted by malevolent spirits. It seems that members of the Legion enjoy revisiting this place after their death, but just to visit friends and maybe have a drink or two with their buddies.
A bit further south in Whitby's downtown core, we can find Lind House, located on the southwest corner of Brock and Burns. Jabez Lind first arrived in Upper Canada with his wife in 1803. Lind House was built in 1811 and during the War of 1812 served as a tavern inn as well as a supply store for those en route to Niagara for battle. It was originally located right on Lind Creek on Dundas Street, but has since been moved twice. Once in 1986 to Cullen Gardens and once in 2013 to its current location on Brock Street. The Whitby Historical Society have operated the museum since 1972, and they display documents and artifacts important to the cultural and material history of Whitby. Staff and visitors alike have noticed some ghostly happenings at Lind House. Visitors have, first of all, noticed a ghost cat that apparently walks the halls of Lind House. In addition, one day a volunteer and a board member were in the basement of the museum when they distinctly heard the manager of the museum call out to them. When they came upstairs to try and find the manager, she was nowhere around and the house was absolutely deserted. Most commonly, the stairs are reported to be haunted. Multiple people on various occasions have come in to visit the museum, have reported seeing a couple at the top of the stairs in old fashioned clothing, looking down at the front door. Other visitors have reported seeing people walking up the stairs, hoop skirts flashing past. But when they turn around, nobody is there. It seems that the most significant thing to happen on the stairs was the Lynn's daughter's wedding. It was reported that when the daughter got married, she walked down the stairs in a white dress looking like an angel. But perhaps it was not what happened on the stairs, but rather that they were missing for so long. In 1893, the Lind family lost possession of the house, and in the 1930s, Lind House was converted into apartments. At this time, the main staircase was removed to make room for a bathroom. Once the house was moved to Cullen Gardens in 1986, the stairs were moved again, and the original design of the house was restored. Perhaps the Lind family is delighted to have their house back as it was, and enjoy viewing the enduring legacy of their house and the history of Whitby on display from such a majestic vantage point. Gallery, which originally served as Whitby Junction Station, which opened in 1903. In 1967, a group of local art enthusiasts decided to start a local gallery, and in 1969, targeted for their location, the Whitby Junction Station, which was slated for demolition. In 1970, they bought the station for one dollar on the condition that they move the station to the Victoria Henry intersection. It seems that spirits followed the station to its new home. As mentioned before, the railroads in Whitby have a very troubled past. Many lives have been lost at this very station behind me. In August of 1935, for example, a young boy was standing near the tracks with his bicycle, and when a train came by, his wheel was caught, and he was dragged under the locomotive. This was not the first death, nor the most famous, to occur here. When it served as a station, Whitby Junction employed many people, including Billy Stone, in the early 1900s, who served as a night manager here. He would often work in one of the ticket booths at the station. One snowy December night in 1914, he showed up for work as usual, 
At 12.37 a.m. on December 11th, 1914, the Bell Telephone Center operator received a call from Whitney Junction. Billy Stone was on the line and reported that he had been shot. By the time the telephone operator was able to get in touch with Whitney Police Chief McGrady, Billy was unresponsive on the phone. When McGrady arrived on the scene, Billy was laying dead in the ticket booth. He had died of a shot to the heart. The office that he was in was absolutely untouched, no sign of a struggle, except for one bloody handprint on the cabinet. Billy's own hands were clean. It was determined from the lack of powder on Billy's front that the shot had come from a distance. It was suspected that he was shot through the window of the ticket booth. Billy's family was also caught up in the investigation. His sister, soon after his death, reported that the week before she had dreamt of her brother being shot. His father was also called to witness. This happened several months into the investigation and the day that he was subpoenaed as a witness, he came to Whitby Junction, laid down on the tracks, and let a train take his life. After these grisly events, it's no wonder that the gallery remains a site of paranormal activity. Staff at the gallery have reported strange noises, shadows, and even the sense of a presence in the gallery particularly in the older building that remains preserved. Perhaps the souls of those who lost their lives at the Whitby Junction Station have never left and continue to walk the halls of this historic gallery. Thank you for joining me on this tour of Whitby's most haunted places. I hope you learned something. But remember, in the words of Edgar Allan Poe, Believe nothing you hear, and only one half that you see.